Well, despite air conditioning units seeing a lot of use this summer, natural gas prices still sit over 60 percent lower than they were a year ago. But as the world desperately tries to cool off amid scorching temperatures, some stocks may actually stand to benefit. How should investors play this heat wave? Pavel Mochana of uh, Raymond James Managing Director is joining us now. Pavel, it's been a while. It is great to see you. Um, and this is sort of such your wheelhouse. I'm so glad that we have you here to talk about it. Obviously, there is this heat wave that is across the globe, in particular in the southwest U.S. We are seeing a lot of issues. And you've been looking at some companies that may be poised to help. One of the most intriguing ones, in my mind, has to do with desalination. But talk us through sort of the big picture thesis there. Yes, Water scarcity is one of the most glaring consequences of the climate crisis. Literally, parts of the world are running out of water. Now, our listeners in California have a long history of this. But as bad as California has been in this regard, the situation is even worse in much of the Middle East, India, other parts of Asia where you have high population density and nowhere near enough supply from aquifers and rainfall. So desalination is a vital aspect of what, what we call climate adaptation, learning to live with systemically higher temperatures. Uh, Energy recovery, yeah. Go ahead, no, go ahead, finish your thought. Energy recovery, ticker E-R-I-I, is the only publicly traded company that is nearly 100% focused on desalination. This company provides equipment to desalination plants that makes them more efficient and ultimately reduces the cost of desalinated water, makes it more affordable. So historically, you know, most of this company's revenue came from the Middle East where desalination is the most common, right, places like Qatar and, and the uh, UAE, but increasingly they're selling to uh, uh, parts of the U.S., China, India, and so on. Pavel, really quickly for our, we have both an investor audience and well, retail investor audience. Can you explain what desalination is? Desalination means taking water from the ocean, removing the salt, this takes a lot of energy, right? Through water goes through these membranes, salt is removed, and the result is potable water suitable for drinking, cooking, everything else. Only about two percent of the world's desalinate of the world's water supply is desalinated today, but that percentage will only go up over time because the climate crisis is making water shortages more common and more severe. And, and, and Pavel, sorry, it's, it's not only is it complicated to do, it is also expensive to do. So when you talk about it being most common in the Middle East, that's not just because there is a need there, but there's also probably the financial resources there to pay for this costly process. So how big a market is there realistically? And is the price coming down, especially when there's only one pure play publicly traded company that does this? Well, to clarify, the desalination projects themselves, you know, these billion dollar plants are built by you know, utilities, you know, a lot of them government owned, you know, places like Saudi Arabia. So energy recovery does not build the project. They provide some of the important equipment used in those projects. You know, and in fairness, there are some large industrial companies that are involved in desalination, but it's just a very small part of their business overall. Is desalination expensive? Yes, it will always be more expensive than getting water from rain or from underground aquifers, right? It, it costs a lot of money, takes a lot of energy to break the water molecule and remove the salt. But here's the reality, in, in the world of more intense heat waves, as we are seeing right now, and the water scarcity that results, there is no choice. Communities that are literally running out of water have absolutely no choice but to build these projects 
Some of you may remember what happened in Cape Town, South Africa in 2018, the so-called day zero, when there was a fear that the this you know massive city would literally have zero water available mm. for the general population. Well, imagine that scenario spread across the large parts of Asia, South America, and yes, also in the United States. It is only a matter of time. What other companies, so we talk about a pure play there, uh, are positioned well with what we're seeing in terms of this increasing, just the hotter earth in general. Uh, we're having these climate change issues, whether we're talking about the U.S. to Europe, melting people, melting phones, apparently, as well. So what other companies that are not so much the pure plays that are positioned well for this? Just let's, let's think about the energy aspect of this. Um, heat waves makes the electric grid less reliable, right? You know, we're all living through these power outages, some of them obviously taking longer, you know, than, than others. Uh, Bloom Energy, ticker BE, provides fuel cells for data centers, hospitals, office buildings, any kind of business that needs super reliable electricity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Bloom's fuel cells protect these businesses from disruptions to the electric grid. This is what we call distributed generation. Instead of needing to rely on the local utility, you put these fuel cells at the site of the business and they will get completely reliable dependable electricity without any risk that the local, you know, weather situation will disrupt the grid. I'm curious about Bloom in particular, because the shares, well, they're kind of all over the place, aren't they, Pavel? And they're down uh, for the year to date. Um, you know, is it just because, or at least is it due in part to the idea that um, investors are not as focused on sort of the long-term solutions? Well, it, look, uh, Bloom is small cap stock. It's uh, high beta, you know, not not yet profitable, I should say. Mm. So in a you know time of you know focus on kind of the more high visibility, you know maybe higher, you know larger cap uh, companies, yeah, the stock is down. Indeed, you know that's that's why I think there is a buying opportunity here. But you know conceptually, it is exactly the events like what we're living through right now the, the you know the, this intense worsening climate crisis that reminds us energy resilience for both the individuals you know households as well as for businesses is an absolute must people cannot live without water okay we all get that people cannot live without electricity at least not for a long time so protecting businesses from disruptions to the grid, that is exactly what Bloom is all about. What other uh, businesses are you worried about uh, in the context of this increasingly hot atmosphere that we're living in? Right. So, you know, again, kind of on, a, a, along the same theme of uh, protecting all of us from the grid shutting down, let's think about the consumer, right, mm -hmm. the individual household best way to protect all of us as individuals is rooftop solar, putting a solar system on the rooftop. Only 5% of American homes have a solar system. Now, in Germany, it's 20%. Uh, Europe is, is you know, quite a bit ahead. Of course, Europe has also learned the hard way during the war that natural gas from Russia is subject to being you know, cut off for political reasons. So that, that's part of the reason why Europe is ahead. But Enphase Energy, ENPH, you know, this is an S&P 500 company, by the way. It gets about a quarter of its revenue from Europe, the rest you know, from the US. This stock also has not run away from you, by the way, uh, but it's, it is an S&P 500, you know, 20 plus billion okay. dollar company. This company makes the microinverter, 
which is an important part of these rooftop solar solutions. Oh, right. 